Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Mo Sagumado. I'm the author of a book called I'm a Cross Pollinator. Right, let me just tell you what's happening here. Um, today is episode four uh, of this spring series, which started on the 31st of August and it's going to run until the 16th of November. We call this Cross Pollination Tuesdays. Um, so it's a total of 12 sessions uh, that we're going to bring to you in a form of a book reading that takes you a little bit closer to the book and deep into the conversation so that we can engage and so on, right? Um, if you want to connect beyond just this recording, here's my email address. It's mosa at knowledgeconnections.co.za, right? I'm also happy to connect via LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, uh, WhatsApp, and Facebook as well. So yeah, let's go straight into it. and. Uh, I want to share all these exciting discussions that we've got coming up, not just today, but at the end of this recording, I'm also going to tell you what else is coming up in this series as we continue until uh, the end of this uh, series, right? So um, our intentions as we hold these sessions, uh, first one is to deepen our connections with each other, to shift perspectives, and the third one is to champion each other's work, right? And like I said, the topic for today is bounce back ability. And the topic that you'll find right at the beginning of chapter four um, is transforming pain into productive energy. So that's part of uh, what you do when you are in a process of bouncing back, right? So you need to find a way of how do I transform the pain and the suffering that I'm going through now into productive energy, right? Um, so that, that would be for today, just three pages, page 100 to 102. And um, I'm going to read straight as it is in the text. And um, yeah, sure. And I read page 100, transforming pain into productive energy. Emotionally secure individuals do not fall from heaven fully equipped to handle any form of pain, suffering, grief, disappointment, or shock. They are a product of years and years of iterative processes framed by cultural uh, teachings that promote collective identity, sharing of pain, crying together, spiritual expression, and the pulling in of individual strengths into one big collective emotional bank account. This becomes a resource they can always draw from, a coping mechanism or a safety net to handle adversity. In such structures, the main emphasis is on the development of warm social relationships, creating strong ties with extended family, which then breeds closely knit uh, community bonds. No one is encouraged to be a lone wolf. Individual identity is derived from the identity of the collective. In this way, individuals are driven by the ambition and goals of the collective. Wealth, therefore, is not defined by your material possessions, but by your ability to give care and to receive care from others. Generosity in all its forms is the glue that binds societies together. Kulufelo was brought up in that system, but she was also exposed to another world, one with different beliefs about wealth, material, and making a contribution in life. This was the case for most other youngsters in her peer group. The trappings of city life dissociated them from their true identity. From a childhood all the way to the weekend of her uncle's burial, she was still clay for shaping and molding. The same was true for the young girls Mutufela, Mutufela saw crisscrossing the crowds as, as low cost waiters. They were participating in practical cultural training and intentional relationship building exercise. As they served food, to the elders, they got to meet their aunts, grannies, and all other relatives within the clan. 
they learned who they are, where they come from, and how they fit into the cultural spider web. Their responsibilities help them build confidence and emotional security. Connectedness wired threads into their hearts and minds. It added to their emotional bank accounts. As they drove back to Pretoria and then later on to Orkney, there was not much talking in the car. They didn't even play music. There was no appropriate music to play. Mutufela checked his rearview mirror. In, when Mutufela checked his rearview mirror, he noticed that even the Mamelodi late aunties were sleeping. It was time for him to carry on with the conversation that he had with himself. His thoughts were trying to settle on an accurate interpretation of what he had just witnessed. It was all new to him and it didn't make much sense. He had many questions. He knew this experience would allow him to connect with Kulufelo on a more meaningful level. Before the funeral, his view of her culture and customs were condescending. He was not aware of it, but it was there in the color of his words and the tone of his speech. While they were still at university, two weeks after they had met, he once asked her, why do you people make funerals such a big deal? Why do you spend so much money on them while there is so much poverty around you? But at the time, but as time passed, his attitude moved gradually towards understanding and respect until he was open. Now he thought, it must be really exciting to be connected to all your family members at such an authentic level without pretenses or showmanship. Right, so that's at the end of chapter, uh, right at the end of page 102 in chapter uh, four, right? So we get to see them uh, driving from Burkersford back to Pretoria, through Pretoria and then down to Orkney Northwest. Um, and, and Motufela being a white African guy was having these conversations with himself in his mind about African black culture that he, he was so curious about it, wanted to learn, but he had committed to, um, for him to really get a good grasp of what the culture is about and have a full appreciation of that culture. He had to immerse himself because learning in, in, the, in the concept of cross-pollination, learning is not something that should happen without connectedness. You need to connect directly, deeply, and diving in to the experience, the culture in this case, and be a part of it, experience it. So he had just spent a weekend, I don't want to give too much away about the book and so on, but he had just experienced it, spending a full weekend um, in Burgersport at a village um, with his girlfriend's people, uh, where Kulufelo came from, so that he could really have a, 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 a deepened understanding of the culture and know exactly how it works, the mechanics of it, the dynamics, and so on. Because if you're talking about being able to bounce back and, 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 and what uh, transforming pain into productive energy entails, he had to learn that firsthand. And so on. So, so that was a very good experience for him. So I don't know with you, what would be something that you can relate with in such a case, right? So, but for me, I'm all for the idea of when we learn, we also need to be immersed into what we are learning. Learning must be an immersive experience. We must connect, we must dive in. We can't learn about swimming and we're very far away from water and so on. Without sounding preachy, let me go on to, to the other uh, chapters, um, right? So what's coming up in the what's coming up in the in in the series that's going to follow now is 
as you can see, we are on bounce back ability, which is episode four. We still have the sharing of pain that's coming up. We have living in two worlds. We have the visual range, leadership dashboard, and stacking the deck, fractured mirrors, contested identities. Then the last one would be reflection, deflection, and refraction. As you can see, it's, it's a very rich mix of topics, all taken straight from the book. And I'm excited that I'm taking you along with me on this journey. And let's see how else can we deepen our connections? How can we shift perspectives? And how can we use this experience to champion each other's work? So yeah, thank you so much for being a part of this. Please spread the word and let's continue connecting and uh, making this happen. Let's cross pollinate. Thank you so much. Wishing you a productive week ahead. Let's connect again next week, Tuesday. Bye.